Directly over the linen tunic was the robe of the ephod olive blue, Exodus 28:31, the only garment that has both its neckline and hem described. First, quote, there shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it. It shall have a woven binding all around its opening, like the opening in a coat of mail, so that it does not tear, verse 32. Later, we will be told, quote, the high priest shall not tear his clothes, Leviticus 21.10. When our Lord, the true judge, stood before the false Roman judge, Pilate, he asked, what is truth? John 18.38. When before Herod, the false king, the king of kings said not one word. And when the true high priest stood before Caiaphas, a political appointee of the Romans, we read, the high priest tore his clothes, saying, he has spoken blasphemy, Matthew 26, 65. This effectively brought to an end the Aaronic priesthood, although they went through the motions for a few more years. On the other hand, even the soldiers knew not to tear Jesus' tunic, also, quote, without seam, woven from the top in one piece. John 19, 23. Lovely, isn't it? Our true judge, king, and priest outshines them all. Now, about the hem, we read, quote, make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem and bells of gold between them, Exodus 28, 34. The distinctives of a pomegranate, it's hard shelled, but if broken, is full of seed, full of potential. Doesn't that speak of fruitfulness if we also are broken before him? And the gold bell speaks of testimony. Was it important? Quote, its sound will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out that he may not die, verse 35. Yes, a golden bell and a pomegranate, testimony in our walk and fruitfulness in our work, profession and reality should be hallmarks of every believer priest. Now, a word on the white linen turban for the high priest. Affixed to it were two items, a plate of pure gold and engrave on it holiness to the Lord, and you shall put it on a blue cord on the front of the turban. Exodus 28, verses 36 and 37. The scripture expressly says, quote, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. Holiness carries with it the important idea of set apartness, if we can coin a word. Holiness is the opposite of common. Anything that might be considered for ordinary use suddenly became holy when it was employed by the Lord. It was set apart for him. But holiness is also linked with the idea of being sanctified or standing with God against everything that displeases him. In this case, it means agreeing with God about sin and his solution for it through sacrifice. The blue cord would link it in people's minds with heaven and would cause them to set their minds on things above. The passage tells us the gold plate with its inscription was there for two contrasting reasons. Quote, it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in all their holy gifts, Exodus 28, 38. Adam Clark writes, quote, Aaron was, as the high priest of the Jews, the type or representative of our blessed Redeemer. And as he offered the sacrifices prescribed by the law to make an atonement for sin and was thereby represented as bearing their sins, end quote. This is what we read about our blessed Savior, where the same word is used for bearing the load of sin. Quote, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, 
Isaiah 53, 4. And the second reason, quote, that they may be accepted before the Lord, Exodus 28, 38. But the Father, through Christ, has made us accepted in the Beloved, Ephesians 1, 6. 